Hello, everyone. So welcome back to another session of ADEX Pixel Expo, the May series. I'm Stephanie, and I'll be your host for today. So for today's session on shark education, we are joined by the very accomplished Jillian Morris. So before we begin, allow me to briefly introduce her. Jillian Morris is a marine biologist, shark conservationist, a member of the prestigious Ocean Artist Society, and the founder of Sharks for Kids. She has also appeared on numerous television shows and won multiple awards, including the inaugural SharkCon Shark Hero Award in 2017. She was also named the Go Blue, 2020, Go Blue Awards 2020 Blue Ambassador of the Year, and now she's a PADI Ambassador. So without further ado, I'll pass the time over to Jillian to begin her wonderful session. The floor is yours, Jillian. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you everyone for joining. Um, I know people are joining all over the world. I'm actually in Bimini in the Bahamas, so it's pretty early for me, but I'm really excited to share with you today um, all about why um, shark education is so, so important. There we go. I'm just going to pull my screen up. So a little bit about me to start. I am a marine biologist. Um, I've been really lucky. I've traveled all over the world to study these incredible animals, um, these beautiful sharks. And being in Bimini in the Bahamas, uh, which is considered arguably the shark diving capital of the world. So I do spend a lot of time with various species of sharks. Uh, this is just, these are some sub-adult or young lemon sharks on the right and a gorgeous great hammerhead on the left. Um, some of you may have been to Bimini um, in search of sharks. It's a really, really special little tiny island, um, but the action underwater is really, really big. So yeah, have traveled all over the world working um, underwater and topside tagging sharks, photographing and filming them, and now spend a lot of time teaching students all about sharks, shark science, shark conservation, just everything about these animals and why they're so important. And that's really what I'm gonna speak about today is why education is needed about sharks uh, and why it's important and what kids can do. And I'll share with you a little bit about our programming as well, if anyone out there is interested. Um, we do make it really easy for you to bring into the home learning space, the classroom, your community group. Now, why is this even needed? Right? Why do we need to teach kids about sharks? Why do we need to talk about them and make sure we're sharing facts and the correct information? It's because of this. So no matter where we're from, no matter where you're watching, chances are you know somebody who's really afraid of sharks. Maybe you're afraid or maybe you were afraid because no matter where we're from, we we're taught to fear uh, big animals. Um, we're taught to fear the ocean, the unknown, right? So chances are you grew up maybe being afraid of sharks, even if you've never seen one. Now, the majority of people watching are, I assume, ocean lovers, divers, and probably uh, have wanted to see sharks. Whereas other people around the world, if they go in the ocean, they don't want to see a shark and they're, they're afraid of that. And that fear comes from a lot of places. Um, naturally, as humans, we're afraid of things we don't understand or we don't know. And the wilderness, there's a lot of things we still are yet to un, you know, discover about the ocean. But a big part of it is this, things that are movies and media and TV. And even though we can say to ourselves, okay, you know, that that's Photoshop. The shark is not jumping at a helicopter. It kind of is constantly given this information to us. And if you grow up with that information and your friends and your family are also afraid of something, by the time you're an adult to make your own decisions, pursue a career opportunities, if this is what you've known about an animal, you're probably going to be afraid of it. And sharks also aren't necessarily what people would consider cute, All right? We look at the, that's my dog when she was little, very cute little puppy with her stuffed animal shark, her plushy shark. And then there's a bull shark smiling on the right. Most people looking at this would say, oh yeah, the puppy's very cute. 
cute is not a word they would use with sharks. And that's okay. We don't have to think an animal is cute. But when people think animals are cute, they're more likely to care about them. Right? They're more likely to have empathy and want to help them. Right? Think of sea turtles or, or dolphins or koala right? versus it's a little bit harder sometimes to get people to care about an animal that isn't necessarily what we would normally describe as cute. But we have to do something. We have to make a change over how the conversation around sharks is being held. Because unfortunately, about 100 million sharks are killed every single year. Right? This is what we should really be afraid of. Is, the, is this big, scary number. They're killed for fins. All right. Finning is one of the largest threats to sharks around the world. And there's a lot of conversation about what that actually means. And the act of finning is actually done at sea where the fins are removed from the shark and then the body is tossed back in and discarded and the fins are retained. But this is not the only threat to sharks. Meat is sold. Um, this is from a grocery store in Florida, right? Shark cartilage pills, um, different pharmacies, grocery stores online. There was this idea that cartilage would be a health benefit if you, if you take it, and it's not. There's no proven health benefit. It doesn't cure cancer. It doesn't prevent cancer. And also, again, just other forms of meat. These are dogfish caught in Massachusetts, and most of them are shipped off to Europe for fish and chips. So finning is oftentimes considered the it's, the, it's the threat that people talk about, but it's not the only threat that these animals are facing. In a study that came out recently, they've re-updated the IUCN Red List, which is an assessment or uh, looking at different animals all over the world, both ones that live on land, in the water, and they look at populations. So how are populations of a species doing? And it was about 25% of sharks, rays, and skates that were threatened, but now it's over 30%. And overfishing is, is a big part of this, and that means taking too many. And that's different whether they're caught as bycatch, which means they're not targeted, or in targeted fisheries looking specifically for sharks and rays. And it is. Um, and the consumption of actual shark meat is, is increasing. Um, and so that is a, considered to be a very large threat for these animals in different places in the world. So we're now seeing more and more critically endangered. This is a great hammerhead shark. Um, if you're a diver that loves sharks, you've probably heard about Bimini and our incredible hammerheads. In the winter months, we get to spend a lot of time with these sharks. They come into shallow water and it's the only place in the world that we know of where you can dive with multiple great hammerheads in very shallow water, anywhere from about five to probably maybe 12, 13 meters. And um, we can have up to 10 or 11 on a dive. This year has been a little bit different, um, less hammerheads, possibly due to the temperatures not being as cold, the water not being cold, but also fishing pressure. Um, we know that they're targeted in Florida and we know that they migrate. So they're not here all the time. And so even though they're protected here in the shark sanctuary, it's illegal to catch and kill sharks in the Bahamas, when they leave here, they're not. And so we're seeing more and more of these uh, incredible animals and becoming threatened with extinction. So with that being said, this is why education is really, really important. So these are just a couple of examples of what kids do and have done and why they can make an impact. Uh, don't kill sharks because children want to see them. That was a four-year-old from Australia who made that poster. The book at the top was actually a school in Singapore um, and they did a whole lesson on sharks and wanted to create a book. And the painting is the wall in the school here in Bimini. So kids can do remarkable things. We just need to empower them and give them the facts and the tools to do them. They have a voice, they can make a difference. And I'm always really, really inspired. And I've worked in shark conservation and shark science for many, many years. And it can be really challenging. It can be frustrating. It can be heartbreaking. But then you see things like this and you realize there is hope. So kids inspire me every single day. 
And it's why I started Sharks for Kids. So we offer a lot of really incredible programs, both in person. Um, we're just getting back to in person. We've had a couple of years of just virtual, um, but we've always done virtual lessons. And the goal is to create the next generation of shark advocates through education, outreach, and adventure. So we do this through learning opportunities in the classroom, um, also education days, field trips, science days. So these are just a few photos of our team out and about doing different projects in different places, getting kids excited about these animals. And so teaching them all about, you can see there's some, we have hands-on learning opportunities, we do field trips, we do events, and really um, our team are marine biologists, shark divers, conservationists, videographers, teachers. And the goal is to share our experiences and really get kids from a young age excited about sharks. Let's share facts and fun and interesting things so that when they are presented with different things on the internet or movies or media or TV shows that teach us misinformation or fear that they know the reality of sharks. So they have that knowledge so they can go, okay, yeah, I know that isn't true. I know that sharks aren't man eating monsters. I know they're really, really important for healthy oceans and important for me and all of us. This is Sharks for Kids. So just a quick glimpse of a little bit of stuff we do. Um, and now I'm just, I just wanna share a few things. We have a website and so we have lots and lots of resources here. And so anyone um, watching, if you're a teacher, a parent, um, you run a community group, a dive center, um, or you're just a person who loves sharks um, and you wanna visit a local library or a school, we have lots and lots of free resources that are available um, and the, the website is Sharks for Kids, and it's pretty user-friendly. You can navigate through for teachers, for students. We have lots of lesson plans, activities, curriculum, videos. And this is just a little video. I'll show you kind of where things are. Outreach, scroll under, um, crafts. Uh, we have lots of coloring pages, activities, and updates and ways to get involved. Well, this is just another little section of the website. Oops, that's the video is going to play. Okay, so this is our curriculum section as well. So you can scroll through um, the ages. These are um, U.S. grades, the kindergarten one, two. But you have, if you look in there, the years. So the age, um, they'll have ages as well. Once you get in there, grade one and two is kind of age seven. And they have full teaching guides, um, full lesson plans, PowerPoints, activities, and crafts. So we've made it uh, really, really easy. Even if you've never seen a shark, you don't know anything about sharks to bring them into your classroom, to bring them into your home learning space, the community group, your dive club. Um, you know, if there's shops up there, host a, a kid's night um, and have kids and parents come and learn. These are things that people are doing and have been really, really successful and a lot of fun. So our classroom visits, as I mentioned, we do. Um, we're just getting back to starting in person. And so we've been lucky. We've done in-person lessons in 11 countries. And, and so including Australia, Singapore, Guatemala, throughout the Caribbean, lots of stuff in the Bahamas because that's where I'm based. And it's really, really incredible. And, and we design the talks to be kind of appropriate for the age as well as the region with what's happening there and, and why it's important. Because yes, global issues are really important. But it's also really important to understand what's happening in your own backyard and what are things that you can do. Something as simple as picking up a piece of trash uh, on the ground so it doesn't end up eventually in the ocean is a way to get kids, even in landlocked areas, involved and excited. So no matter what we're doing, whether someone is scrolling through the website or they've booked a lesson or a, a field trip, there's a call to action. We want kids to understand 
that they can make a difference. There's a lot that they can do. And their voice is far more powerful than they realize and probably than we give them credit for. As I mentioned, we do a lot of virtual lessons. We've always done this. Um, we launched into our website in 2013 on, and we've spoken to uh, we're probably at over 200,000 kids now. And um, we've done lessons, virtual lessons in 70 countries. So it, it makes it easy for us to travel. It makes us the world accessible and kids all over can learn about why these animals are important, why the ocean is important and how we're all connected and how our actions can make an impact. So while we do focus on sharks, it is really about being global citizens. And, and so all of these kids that are, no matter where they're from, are gonna hear, you should be afraid of sharks. They're monsters, they're man eaters, they're scary, don't go in the ocean. Um, living in the Bahamas, I know a lot of the locals that won't go in the water because of sharks. Yet, people from all over the world come here to get in the water with sharks. So that's a, that's a disconnect. And education is what changes that. And when we educate kids, we're also educating a community because kids speak to their parents, their friends and their friends' parents and their grandparents and their family and their community. And those conversations are really, really important. Those conversations can make change. And if you yourself are a shark lover, a shark diver, and you've shown a photo or shared your experience with someone, chances are that person might have been like, weren't you scared? Isn't that dangerous? And you can have a, a conversation five or 10 minutes that can actually really help them understand a little bit more about these animals, a little bit more about why um, sharing that information and, and understanding the truth about sharks is important. So we do a lot of different talks. Um, again, I mentioned our team have a lot of different backgrounds. So uh, we do ones on just general anatomy and, and an introduction to sharks, one that's very focused on science, um, shark superpowers. I actually wrote a children's book all about shark adaptations or their superpowers. So I do a lesson based on that and uh, the cool, weird and wonderful things that sharks do, but kind of using cartoon sharks to get kids interested and excited about these animals. And no matter what we teach, no matter what lesson we're doing or program again, there's a call to action, but there's also uh, a respect for these animals. Um, I love sharks, but they're wild animals. And so always speaking about what we're doing um, to be in the water with them or when we're working with them, tagging, respecting wild animals. And that's a big part of it um, because there's also, you know, a whole other side of, of media and social media where, you know, people are riding sharks or wrestling them and doing all these things that sharks deserve to be respected. And we are lucky to go in the ocean anytime any of us get to go in. We're really, really lucky. It's not our home. And we use the special equipment to be able to be there. And it's really, really special. And I know for me, anytime I get to see a shark, it's, it's beautiful. And I so appreciate that and that time in the water. And, and because I'm respecting these animals, I can have really amazing interactions. Um, during uh, the kind of the big part of the pandemic, we also launched our webinar series. So we have 100 we over 100 webinars and different videos on our YouTube channel um, with talks just like this with scientists, artists, educators, divers from all over the world. So students could learn um, from incredible people doing amazing research, um, photographers and videographers, and just to, help, to learn a little bit more about what career options are, opportunities that exist to get involved, and to just learn more about. And even though these were geared towards students, we had a lot of uh, adults, university students watching to learn. I learned a lot. I watched a bunch of them. I hosted a lot of them um, and, and learned a lot. But we also just have fun craft videos and, and everything that I've shared with you so far is free to use. Um, all the resources, all the videos, the teaching plans, um, the lessons as well. We never charge. Uh, we do receive donations sometimes from schools, but there's no required fee. We want to make this accessible. We don't want financial barriers to be in place so that kids can't access these materials or school can't access them and learn. We want to make this um, as, as available and easy to use and incorporate in your learning experience as possible. 
And this is just kind of, we also use Flipgrid if people are familiar with that. We have a lot of resources on there. And then I'm just gonna show what some of the materials look like and kind of wrap up here if you guys have any questions. So um, for example, because many of our team are scientists, this is a project that I worked on. So um, spot tagging or satellite tagging a tiger shark. And this is one of her tracks and we used Google Earth. So we have the video um, and different types of tags that we're using. Uh, there's a tiger shark on the top right in Australia, a bull shark here in Bimini. Um, the tiger shark that was tracked was tagged off Seba in the Dutch Caribbean. And this is just a quick, this is kind of what the video looks like um, that we can teach kids with to show what every time that tiger shark came to the surface, the satellite tag pinged and we can actually track and see where she's going. We try and use materials. We have a lot of graphics, photos, posters that teachers can print as well, infographics um, that can be printed for the classroom or the learning space. And a big thing we've done is we have a virtual reality shark dives. So we've taken hundreds of students, thousands of people um, on a, a virtual shark dive and they see multiple species. And these are some kids in the Turks and Caicos. And being able to, if you can't take kids in the ocean, you can take them on virtual reality. This is pretty incredible. And during the pandemic, we made this available online. Um, you can watch it just on your computer or phone if you do have goggles and you can view YouTube through those. Uh, and it's a really incredible experience. And you can see people and it's, it's amazing to watch kids just reach out and just turning all over. And, and so if we're sitting at home and we can't go in the ocean, uh, trying to bring the ocean to kids and trying to bring sharks to kids. And we do have a team of, um, we have lots of, I'm also a professional photographer. My husband's a, a videographer who films for Discovery and BBC. So we have a lot of content. So we have beautiful videos that we can share kids and get them excited. Um, big iconic species like the white shark. But then we can also, when I'm talking about nurse sharks and their super suction, we have videos like this so kids can understand uh, how nurse sharks eat. It's kind of a fun one. Lots of different graphics, getting kids excited and learning facts and learning about species like the fact that sharks can glow. Some sharks have this prickly outer, uh, like that little dogfish, how um, some of them can change uh, pretty significantly from being um, newborns to adults. So just kind of getting them interested in the weird and the wonderful about these animals. And this is just a, another page. We have anatomy on the website that you can check out. And so different senses. Um, this is one of my favorite pages, the jaws with some really cool videos. And so they can scroll through. So there's learning resources as well. So this is uh, a school I visited in Singapore in 2018 when I actually spoke at 8X Live, which is incredible. And these kids, they ask amazing questions. When you go in and share that story, share that dive you went on, share some of your photos or a shark book, um, they ask incredible questions and they're excited. Kids want to help animals. They want to help the ocean. They want to learn. And so I walk away really inspired. And when we get them in the water, we do field trips here in Bimini and a lot of these kids, when we get out, don't want to get in the water. They're afraid. They've never been on a boat before. Um, some of them don't know how to swim. And so they're nervous. And then we spend time in this really shallow area with southern stingrays and nurse sharks. And you can see that change happen right in front of your eyes. And I know that these kids go home and now they talk to their parents because their parents stop me in the street. My kid won't stop talking about sharks. My kid's excited. My kid wants to become a scuba diver. And we've had kids go through our programs that now work for the local dive shop. And they went from being afraid to now there's some of the shark feeders on the hammerhead dive. And they're teaching their kids and fellow community members um, how important these animals are. Um, tourism dollars bring in, um, it's nearly 114 million US dollars to the Bahamas. So sharks are worth far more alive here um, than dead because they generate so much income for the community. And because divers come in, they stay places, they spend money, not just on the dive. And so for these kids to learn that at such a young age and experience that, it's really, really important. And this is just a quick little video clip. Hopefully the volume's not too loud before I wrap up.
So we have several sites here in Bimini that have been, um, I think this site's been dived for over 30 years. And so putting a bait box on the bottom, the, the reef sharks, the Caribbean reef sharks are swimming around and the kids can actually see them. And it's a really, really incredible experience because these kids then walk away with their own story, their own experience. And instead of being afraid of something they've never seen or they don't know, now they realize that they can share a space with these animals and they can appreciate them. And I'll finish with this. This was one of my favorite moments. This is Billy, he was 15 years old and we took him into the mangroves, the nursery area where the juvenile lemon sharks hang out. And so because there was a proposed golf course development that was gonna wipe out this whole area, and he said to me, why don't we just bring the people who want to ruin this out here and they'll see how beautiful this is and they won't want to destroy it. And I thought, oh, I wish it was that easy. I wish we could bring people out here and they could see this magical world, stick their face in the water and understand how important these mangroves are. So that beautiful thinking that kids have, that young adults have, um, that's what inspires me and gives me hope and that he's gonna carry that with him. Um, Billy now works for the dive shop. Um, some days he has another job, but he comes back and, and works for the dive shop as well. And, and so that continuously gives me hope. This is why education is important. This is why sharing these opportunities with kids and, and everyone we can about these animals because Billy is gonna be an ambassador, the way he votes, the way he shops, um, the things he buys and, and voting for continuing to protect the shark sanctuary here, um, continuing to uphold those laws and he'll educate his community members, his peers. And, and it's really, really important. So it might just be one classroom at a time or one student at a time, but it has a ripple effect. And, and this is what we need. The education connects community. It helps people understand why these animals are important, why the oceans need our help. And it's really, really, it, it's necessary for conservation. We have to have education in place. So this is why it is so, so important for all of us. All right, I don't know if you guys are gonna do questions. This is just a quick slide. You guys can check out the website, follow us for updates and information. Um, if you have any questions or, or wanna know how to use some of the materials or get involved or book a, a visit, um, yeah, you can reach out there. We're more than happy to chat with you. Okay, uh, Jillian, thank you so much for such an insightful presentation. I thought it was really heartening to learn more about what you're doing to educate the kids about saving sharks and also deconstructing the stereotypes of them being like scary animals. And I think it's really important because it's always good to learn these kind of things that are so valuable from such a young age. Thank you. Okay, so for our viewers, uh, currently we don't have any questions, but if you do, please feel free to drop them on our Facebook page. We will try our best to answer them. And also go check out uh, Jillian's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, as well as the website if you are interested in what she's doing. Cool. <laughs> okay, uh, just a gentle reminder, our ADEX show will be from 16th to 18th September at the Sands Expo Convention Center. So we hope to see you all there. <laughs> Uh, once again, thank you, Jillian, so much for doing a session with us. And thank you, viewers, for attending. And stay tuned for our next session at 5.30. We'll be having a monthly in conversation with David Strike. Okay, hey, so... Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Uh, Have a great... Yeah, thank you, too. Thank you. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Bye, thank you.